Hey bitches. <laughs> this is legit me starting this video up for the third time. I'm up in my tarot room, my mystical arts room, blah, 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 whatever, my office, whatever you want to call it. And um, this is um, a July, August reflection, September selections video. But I don't think there's going to be a lot of selecting because I kind of want to keep doing these monthly updates. Although what I have found is that I'm not very good at them. I tend to, you know, make a nice selection. But since my collection is pretty big, uh, I like, I don't know, I think I'm more of a weekly kind of guy. So I'll like be obsessed with a couple of decks for a week and then I kind of want to change things up and I can. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm not going to do a selection video every week. I mean, I could, but I'm not gonna. Um, but there's lots and lots to reflect on. So, uh, first of all, went to Canada, went to New York City. It was fabulous um, and expensive. <laughs> I'm still financially recovering, which kind of sucks. But, you know, I'm a grown-ass man, so I just need to deal with it, I guess. And, um, I have, um, you know, I bought a couple of decks there. One of them I'm kind of, like, regretting. Uh, I don't even remember, but I haven't felt called to work with it or to use it at all since I got back. Which is a shame because it was really expensive. Um, which kind of taught me the valuable lesson of don't buy decks while on vacation <laughs> it is a really good deck but uh, i'm kind of you know just not sure if it is for me um and i have to say i did miss like i really missed being at home i'm such a, a homebody I'm boring as hell, like, everyone else will be like, yay, you got to travel, and it's so effing cool, and I mean, it is, but it's also, you know, a lot for me, I'm very sensitive, I'm just not that good at it, so I'm not very good at traveling, I don't do it well, I don't do waiting well, um, but yeah, it was fun. I read a couple of books there, uh, one of them is downstairs now, so I can show you that, but it was Electra by Jennifer Saint. If that was stellar. I read that fully on the Amtrak from Toronto to New York City in one sitting. Uh, it was so good. And I can't wait to get into more of her books. I love this boom in retelling these Greek myths from different perspectives and shit. And it's just, it's tickling my nerdy geeky bone so so hard so i love that <laughs> i really do and uh another book that i read uh which i already like uh, oh shit it's not here why is it not here uh anyways i'm a mess i'm unprepared um another book that i read is the sequel to this the x hex it's probably downstairs as well it's called the kiss curse and that is such a great book. Like, if you're looking for a cute... Like, this is not a good book. Let's be very upfront about that. This is a, hall a slightly spicy Hallmark movie. And The Kiss Curse is basically the same book. A slightly spicy version of a Hallmark movie but make it witchy and set around Halloween. And The Kiss Curse is the same. Uh, so I just re uh, just read The Kiss Curse. I'm reading The Secret Life of Addie LaRue again, and I'm loving that. But if you're looking for a cute fall read, a cute Halloween read, and you haven't read this yet, read this and also read uh, The Kiss Curse because they're so good. They're so much fun. Uh, this is a great standalone story. It doesn't end on a cliffhanger at all. I've talked about this a lot. Martin gifted me this, and the sequel is just as good, and I got that gifted as well. Maeve gifted me that. 
so that is, was a lot of fun. Like the Kiss Curse was a hoot. Uh, I'm really enjoying Abby LaRue. And another thing that I will, another thing that I will be reading, oops, everything's falling over here because I'm stuck between so much mess. Ooh, and I actually do have uh, Electra here. That's fun. Maybe the Kiss Curse is here as well. No, it's not. So this was Electra. I mean, look at that cover. It's so pretty. It's such a good book. Um, Electra is about Electra <laughs> and um, her mom, Clytemnestra and a Cassandra of Troy. Such a good read, especially the Cassandra perspective is very much, um, I think a little bit like underrated and I love the way I loved her bits the best. Uh, we all love an, an unhinged clairvoyant queen. So yeah, really good. Uh, another really recommended fall read that I'm, I haven't finished yet, so I still have a little bit to go, um, is this, We Are All Witches by uh, Mari Kidd. I got this for really cheap off Amazon, and um, because I saw it at a bookstore, didn't read the back, just saw the cover and the title and was like, ooh, need that. I did flick through it. Um, but this is such such a sad book. This is about um, a lot of the like, like the witch trial cases and the witch burning and witch hanging cases. Uh, and you know, it's sort of a mixture of nonfiction and fiction, which I find fascinating. So you get a little bit of what we know. And then that ends every time it ends in here's how that might have happened. And then you sort of enter the, the fiction part where they write a little bit of a, a, a short story about that witch, which usually just were very regular yet slightly odd women. And then there's a live your life by this person. So it's, it's just really cool. Uh, apparently this is not out everywhere, but it's really good. So if you can get your hands on it for fall, stunning. Another book that I've already shown on here, but that I really loved and that also very much gave me fall vibes was um, The Hideaway by Pam Smy. Pam Smy is a fabulous uh, children's author and she does a lot of illustrations, a lot of book covers. I know she does the Lucy Strange book covers. She's a very famous children's author and this is a story about um this is a story about um abuse in the house how do we call that again well anyways a, a book about abuse an abusive marriage a kid who suffers or a relationship a kid who suffers from it and magic and it's just really gorgeous let me show you some of the illustrated bits they're just really 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 pretty like and Pam is not just a very good writer and not just a very good illustrator but also a very good writer uh, and you know like little details that I loved about this is that all the parts that are told from the perspective of um, Billy the boy who the book is about those are all illustrated the adults the grown-ups parts aren't and then there's this little bit that doesn't have any text that is just fully illustrated which just is so pretty and another book by her that is also really good uh, that i have already read but that i have yet to read is thornhill that was her debut novel um which is um part a journal from a girl in the uh, 1980s and part nowadays and all the parts that are in the now are illustrated and gorgeously illustrated at that and uh, all the parts that are like for example like this like look at that it's just stunning and all the parts that are in the the journal those are um you know just plain text so I love a queen that plays with uh, her different like art mediums and I love the mix of illustrations and I don't know. So that's kind of like stuff that I've been reading and that I have read a while, but these are like some of my cutesy fall recommendations. 
uh, decks that I've really been enjoying uh, are, were, and are. Uh, this deck, uh, which I, I I kind of need to do a review on it, uh, but you know, like I'm working again and I just don't have the time. Uh, this is a deck that, you know, people have like either love it or hate it. Uh, this deck has everything that I don't like in a deck and still I love it. Because this deck has, um, it has sort of the shadow puppet figures that make up animals. And then it will have just the name on the animal on the card, and it won't have, um, it won't have any, uh, other keywords on there. The whole deck is very bluish, purplish, neonish, uh, and, you know, like, um, me and Martin were talking, and he was like, this is not for me, this is kind of, like, he doesn't like it. Um, but, you know, like, the write-ups in the guidebook have been so good and have really got me thinking. And, uh, you know, they're pretty, how do you say, they're pretty, you know, they're tough love, kind of, which I like a lot. And they're not too, like, wordsy and long, but yet have written with, like, a lot of care. I'm in love with the card backs to, like, uh, the line work, um, because I believe the... The illustrations were by Rose Ides. That line work of hers is just so, it's, I'm, I'm literally jealous of the skill. Like, uh, so this has been so much fun to use and I want to keep using it because I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so much fun. Really am like, I'm, I'm owning my Oracle Ante, uh, vibes. Will I ever use this in a reading for someone else? No, it's completely unusable unless you learn the deck by heart or use your own knowledge of the animals in the deck. Um, you know, and I think I have, like, I could probably do a pretty good intuitive reading in regards to that. But, you know, you're really missing out on half the fun if you don't use the guidebooks. Also, Running Press is, you know, they have these really cute, like, satchel style boxes now. Uh, that just really work well and are amazing and the card quality is awesome. Another one that I also talked about on the channel extensively is this, the Fairies Oracle, which is just really, it's nothing special. Let's be honest about that. You know, it's an Oracle deck with good keywords, uh, but it's once again on that really good flexible cardstock with a matte lamination. It's just this really pretty art that I just love, 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 love. I think this is really good. I've shown this before on the channel, and I've really been enjoying, you know, playing with this. This is this deck feels like, to me, like a deck that you play with. This card I don't like, but all the other cards I do like, and I love them a lot. And, you know, overall, it's a really cute little set, and these aren't, like, expensive at all. Um, as far as tarot, I've been really been enjoying my own tarot deck, um, which, you know, gets boring to talk about after a while, but, you know, once you have made your own exactly the way you wanted it, it's really difficult for any other deck to, uh, surpass that, <laughs> and that may sound a little bit, how do you say... I don't know, annoying or dumb or conceited, but you know, I made that deck for me. I It already existed before it was on Kickstarter. I had a really good test print and the Kickstarter just made it so that I and hundreds of other people could have it in really good quality. And I like that a lot. I, I discovered uh, someone who did a wholesale um, like bulk by who's selling on Etsy, who's selling them amazingly well, which is ama which is really cool. And I've just really been enjoying working with that deck. Uh, you know, it's like literally having like a conversation with myself because every affirmation on that card was written by me for me <laughs> and anyone else who enjoys it. 
I've also really, 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 really been enjoying my Queen Doreen decks. Um, uh, so I've acquired the Archangel Michael Oracle, which is, you know, it's cute. It's not the greatest deck ever by her. Um, and I've been watching, like, some of her Christian videos. She's unhinged, like... <laughs> it's it's fun. You should probably spend an afternoon looking at them. It's very telling. It, it shows her in a light that, you know, I already knew she was in. Uh, but for someone, she talks about tarot a lot in them. And her lack of knowledge about them after having published hundreds of Oracle decks and like three or four tarot decks, I find that laughable and literally like really entertaining to watch i'm like girl you know maybe it's for the best that she's no longer in this in this world but the archangel michael deck has this really campy card back with this like photography style archangel michael and that art style comes back in the deck let's see does it ever come back it sort of comes back once does it ever but does it really come back i kind of want to check that because i mean that same image comes back obviously but does it come back more more than just once a little bit here we have an illustration from probably that guy who also did the uh the angel tarot you know the old school one so that kind of has that photo realism thing going for it um, oh, this one kind of has it. It's just a straight up picture of a lady asking for uh, guidance. So I guess it does come back. Oh, another one, a sort of Jesus-y Archangel Michael one. So that's kind of cute. So I, I have to eat, but does it really fit in well with the rest of the deck? I mean, there's a lot of glare here, so you probably won't be able to see. The rest is very much illustrated. And it's cute. It's cute. I like it. Uh, it's nothing special. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know. And I've, I've not been paying a lot for these. Like, some people may think, ooh, but these are so expensive because they're out of print. People are kind of over them. Like, if you wait, especially on eBay, there's, like, tons of, like, grannies that are getting rid of their, like, old angel cards. And they're like, hey, I kind of want... Uh, I kind of want that deck uh, gone, and you can get it for really cheap. Like, I got the Angel Dreams one for seven pounds off eBay, seven UK pounds. Uh, shipping was literally more than the, than the deck. I also got this one, and I quite like this one, actually, the Angel Therapy cards. The words Angel Therapy make me giggle a little bit. Um, I love that we have a Twin Flame card in here. I find that so funny. Uh, the backs with the healing hands I also find very funny. There's just something really iconic about her decks because I've told this many times, but at the psychic, at the little psychic fairs that we have here, this is still like the, the whole Doreen conversion into Christianity completely flew by the Netherlands and... You know, we still have hundreds of these angel ladies using her decks every day, every single day for everyone. Uh, giving readings, just straight up reading the paragraphs of texts that are on the card. And I don't know, it's just, it's very, like some of these card backs I've seen so many times over the years that they kind of become iconic. Uh, and this is a, it's a cute little deck. It's usable. It's not too heavy on the messages. I, I think, I, I believe the Archangel Michael one, I find that one a little too, too text-based. And, uh, I don't know, this is cute. It has a cute parchment look. And, um, yeah, I don't know, I like it. I got another one by her, and obviously I don't have that here. So I'm going to pick it up, and I'm not going to edit this video, just so you know, because I can't be bothered. So I got it. 
because this completes my uh, Angel Archangel deck trilogy. And this is my favorite of the bunch, the Archangel Gabriel Oracle cards. So we have, let's, let's hold them all together because that's fun because now I have them all. Also the Gabriel one I got from someone who I traded with the, or that I traded with before. And they were like, and I was asking on Instagram, hey, does anyone have these? And they were like, she was like, oh yeah, I, I, I have that. Um, and you know, I'm not really using, the, using it, so you can have it for this price. And it was a very normal, good price for an OOP oracle deck nothing too crazy uh and you know and i was like yeah give it to me so um we have the archangel michael we have the archangel raphael which i quite like even though it's a health deck and i'm highly opposed to doing health readings but it's kind of a fun deck and then I have the Archangel Gabriel deck. And the reason why I got this last was because I always was the least attracted to this because this doesn't really have commissioned art. This just has uh, art from um, from the public domain, uh, just that sort of Raphaelite art, but it kind of gives you that vibe of, I don't know, like very classic looking cards and i think it's just i don't know i think it's stunning and this is very much a deck about creating and creativity uh, which is kind of fun you know it's kind of fun it's very much about time management project management creativity uh you know inspiration and it just features i don't know quite tight um graphic design um you know it looks very pleasing on the eye it looks kind of vintagey and it's very very consistent in the way the art in the way it's presented unlike some of the other doreen decks where it can be a little bit boring for example with the michael one uh, let me just even the backs i like a lot uh these are quite iconic as well this is the back the card back let me show you the Michael again and the way that looks versus uh, the Raphael one. So, or, and then also the Raphael one. So I'm gonna grab all of them. I do quite like the Raphael. It is really ugly, but I don't know. I think it's kind of charming. So for the Michael and the Raphael, it's very much, we get this sort of like border with a title up top and then text at the bottom and for the Michael one there's a lot of text for the Raphael one there isn't that much text and then with the um I don't know it just looks a lot this looks a lot more like oh this looks a lot prettier graphic design wise I think a lot clearer this is just a whole lot of border and a little bit of text and this is a whole lot of border with too much text also the backs uh this doesn't really have a special back design but they at least they did put some effort into the the outside border the inner circle thingy is just you know art from the cards this is recycled art from the card but then uh that's funny I, the Raphael one has a special caduceus back design so i find it I find it interesting that they're all interesting decks. And I don't know, like, I've really, as bad as she is, she's a horrible, horrible person now. Like, she's made so much money off of all of these people, and she just completely, like, shat on them. Um, you know? But for some reason, as much as I hate it, all the decks, and you can cancel me now, I don't care. I find a lot, and I mean a lot of comfort in them, and I don't know why. And I just love having them. I love having them around me. Um, I don't know. I've really been enjoying working with them. And tarot decks, not so much. So let's look at this little basket. Something that I do kind of want to use more, uh, but it's really unruly because it's so big, is this. The unnamed... Um, 
but it is really pretty. It is really, really pretty. Um, by Zia Hunt, who did The Children of Letha, which I didn't really like, so I rehomed that. But this is a huge beast of a deck. It's super thick because it's a tarot deck, and then there's also 30 oracle cards extra. And it's called the Unnamed because there are no names on the cards, yet you can quite easily see which tarot card is which. Uh, but then I do have the Oracle cards mixed in, and that makes it a bit difficult sometimes. Um, so this is definitely one that you kind of need to sit with. For example, this is the Five of... Is it swords or wands? I think wands, but it could also be swords. Like it's it's difficult. So I feel like although this is a tarot deck, you're sort of supposed to read this more intuitively and kind of go with the flow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this will be the eight of cups. Uh, so it is still like, for example, for me now, this is difficult to see, but once I sit down with it, look through a couple of cards, kind of get back into the system, it does make sense. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of swords, and we get this really cute little like Pine Martin, I think, up top, which does kind of have that mischievous energy. So this is just a really stunning deck. Uh, the pentacles are very clear. This is one, two, three, four five six seven of pentacles yeah that makes total sense so that's that's definitely a deck that i want to play with a little bit more this month but i'm not going to commit to a whole crate of decks that i have to use uh, per se and otherwise something bad will happen uh, i'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> but this is definitely one where i feel like yeah this was not a cheap one and i do love it uh, but it's definitely not a deck where I'm, like, because it is kind of one that you have to sit with a little bit longer. Look at the, I, you know, I thought I would kind of hate the nameless aspect. But it does really force me to spend more time with the card and with the art in the card. Rather than just going, oh yeah, Seven of Pentacles, blah, 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 assigning my standard like ways I read that card. No, this actually kind of makes me look, uh, but I would never do a full spread with that deck. Like three cards tops, but preferably just one, especially with all the Oracle cards mixed in. Another deck that I have to grab, I'm very sorry, uh, that I liked a lot, but never got because it's really expensive over here in the Netherlands. Uh, there's this wholesaler, tarot.nl, and they mark up the prices on their decks a lot. But then they're also, they have a web store that, you know, regular customers can visit. Anyone can visit it. But then they are also the only wholesaler within, like, Western Europe, basically. Or at least, you know, like, the, the continental part of Europe that sells these decks. And their price... Their, su their suggested retail price is kind of taken over by every metaphysical shop over here. So this deck was 70, is still 70 euros, which is a lot of money. Uh, and it's a deck that I liked, but that I kind of wanted just so I could use it as a majors only. And I always felt like, as cute as it is, that 70 euros was a bit much for majors only, but the metaphysical store over here where I work sometimes as a reader, uh, she's closing up shop, which is very sad. And she had a 50% off sale. So I was like, now it's becoming more in the justifiable range. So I just got it there and it's, the backs are really pretty and uh, the fronts are just really cute. Uh, you know, what I like about this, this is a tarot deck that's aimed towards younger readers. Um, what I like about it is that, and which which is something I wish she would have uh, sort of made go on in the ma minors as well, is that it's very cute, but it still has this very mystical feel about it for some reason. Uh, and the minors are just very mundane. And just didn't really, never really clicked with me. Whereas this is just too cute, too adorable. 
maybe might end up getting their Oracle deck as well because it's just, oh, whoops, I just dropped some cards because this is just too adorbs, too amazing. I love the Fool. Like, this Fool card is probably my favorite Fool card ever. I love that Fool. Um, are there any other cute ones in here that I just dropped but that I didn't show? Oh, this spider. This little spider is so cute. I just want to cuddle him. I adore him. And, I'm, and you know, I'm obviously not exclusively going to use this as a majors only, but... I mean, I guess the minor suits do tell a cute story, but it's just not necessarily for me. The quality of the deck is amazing. It's on non-sticky rose petal finish and, you know, these backs, guys. And also the box. The box is so cute. Like, ah, oh, it's a really good, good little deck, a good little set that I like a lot. And I don't think she sold a bunch of these but i'm glad i got a copy finally so yeah this is another and this does kind of have a fall vibe to it as well so you know i'll probably be as far as tarot goes be toying with these two a little bit more than i normally would this month and then there's one deck that i really want to get but it's kind of expensive um uh, what's it called again it's called the roses the rose dust and ashes oracle but it's like 60 for a 36 card deck. And then, you know, the gloss, the, it's very glossy. And I'm like, why is it glossy? I do like it a lot. And then I'm also working on a deck of my own that is photo manipulation, Photoshopy. Uh, that's just going to be for me. And you'll probably see that on this channel whenever it's finished. So. I've been rambling for the longest time. I'm going to go downstairs, see if I can get a little bit of reading in, uh, not with the cards, but I'm going to be uh, reading. I've been, oh my gosh, I've been uh, totally falling back into the point horror books that I used to have as a child, then lost, then someone was selling their whole collection for like very cheap, the Dutch versions, obviously, because those are the ones I read as a kid. And I've just been enjoying my Richie Tankersley Cusick, R.L. Stein, Lael Litke, uh, Theresa Breslin, um, Diane Ho books, you know, like those really bad young adult horror thrillers where it's always about a girl who's either on vacation at her, at her aunt's or new at school, just transferred. And there's always two guys. One looks really hot and is really nice. One looks really hot but in a douchey, dangerous kind of way and is not nice. There's a killer on the loose. It's always the really cute, nice, hot one that's the killer. And the douchey, sexy, darker, hot one usually comes in to save the day. It's very horrible, very patriarchal disgusting there's a lots of like body shaming going on it's very late 80s early 90s uh but it's there's such a who to read so i'm either going to read one of those because you can easily finish one of those in a, in a in an hour and a half or it's going to be the invisible life of Addie larue uh also i don't think i'll be able to be posting much during this month because work is really crazy uh, but this is my, this has been my July-August reflections, September selections. Anyways, loved talking to you and bye-bye. <laughs>